Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be flying the Cessna 170B. Now this is a Carinado, this is uh, one of the ones that come that's a payware, it's in the marketplace for like 15 bucks. I've uh, been flying it quite a bit lately and I'm actually kind of impressed with it. It is uh, definitely a vintage piece of machinery and it's a lot of fun. If you're curious where we are by the way, we're in Jalalabad and we're going to be basically crossing over that mountain and landing at a small little strip on the opposite side of things. It's about 6.30 in the morning, uh, this is obviously the middle of the summer, so you get very, very, very long days in this part of the world. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, when I get inside this thing, I just look around for two seconds and go, oh my gosh, look at the, ah, you know, it's kind of like gushing because this is such an old way of doing things as the big old school heavy gyros and everything like that. And the fuel gauges, I love them. They just sort of sit inside the wingtips here. Speaking of which, I don't know why Flight Simulator resets your fuel every time. Now we got a full tank. Delightful. And I also love the fact that, you know, look on here, you got the two different tanks and everything. You even have, like, the really, really, really old school little handle to go ahead and open up the air vent if you want to be able to, you know, kind of breathe kind of a thing like that. Obviously, we're sitting out here in the deep, dark desert, so I'm going to pop those open right away. Not critical. Go ahead and get my Windows 2 while I'm at it. Now, one of the things I did dig up when I was uh, doing some research for this particular video is I did manage to find an actual original POH for this airplane, and I will provide you with a link for it if you want to kind of check it out. It looks a little bit like this, and, uh, like, when you just, like, poke around through this, like, you know that this thing is, like, an ancient piece of paper. Like, uh, one of my favorites, though, is if you scroll down to the middle here, because there's a really, really great picture of, like, somebody getting in and out of it, and it's like, oh, this is how you adjust the seat. Like, if you look at the upholstery, like, on the carts and carpets and stuff like that, and, like, you know, like, she's, she's looking pretty happy here, and, like, just the way everything works. I love the fact that it has, like, you know, the old, like, you know, ashtray and everything like that. It's just super cool, and, again, have fun reading that a little bit later on. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing uh, nice and revved up and started. Oh, what the heck? Go away. Nobody likes you. And it's gone. So uh, let's do it. So uh, the weird thing about this one is all your handles are handles. And your throttle is like, oh, I love this thing. It's like a huge just knob. And you know you're going to unscrew the top of that knob by accident at some point. Starting this thing is actually pretty straightforward. There's not like a lot of like kind of like mystery steps to it. Because these are kind of, I'm not going to call them the old days, but like the before time when things weren't as uh, scary or in depth, you didn't have to worry about things too, too much. So let's go ahead and uh, take it a look here. So the first thing we got to do is uh, we got to go ahead and make sure the carburetor heat is set to cold. The carburetor heat in this model is actually anti-engine heat, so it's not quite the same thing. Don't panic about that too, too much. Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, operate the controls and make sure everything's working properly. So I'm going to go ahead and give everybody a wiggle. Wow, wow, wow. All right, that looks pretty good to me. I'm not going to worry about it too, too much here. We're going to make sure our brakes are set. So this is old school. You push down on the brakes and you pull the handle. Oh, that's the same way it is today, even though it's this big white handle. Oh, it's so wild. So we're going to go ahead and uh, set the mixture control to full rich. So we're going to shove that thing all the way in there like that. We're actually going to have to lean because of our high altitude here, but I'm not going to worry about that too, too much. At least not until we uh, kind of get rolling sort of a thing in a couple moments. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the fuel selector to both tanks. So uh, where's that? Ugh, it's right here between our legs. Oh, I'll float down here so you can take a look at it. And you can see it's like, <laughs> it's like a clock, just different. So I'm going to go ahead and set that right in the middle. That seems kind of sketchy if you ask me, but um, that will work perfectly fine for us. Uh, if the engine is cold, prime the engine as follows. Uh, the engine is not cold today. So let's go ahead and take a look at our air temperature. Air temperature is 50 degrees on the nose. The book says 50 degrees or below. So unfortunately, that means we are going to have to go ahead and prime it. Uh, priming is uh, relatively straightforward. Um, again, all we do is we kind of flip everything on. Hey, go away. Nobody likes you. So let's go ahead and get this real fast. Uh, let's see here. The instruction says, turn the master switch on. You pull it out, which is just a little weird. Clear the propeller. No. Clear. Okay, there we go. Let's take care of that real quick. Uh, we're going to make sure the magneto switch is off and the throttle is closed. So we're going to pull the throttle out as far as we can get it, which we did. Nice. All right. Good, good, good. Uh, let's see here. Make sure everything's off. Uh, give it th four, three to four strokes of the primer as the engine turns over. Ordinarily not required except in this one. So that makes things a little bit interesting. So uh, how do we do that? Make certain magnetos off and throttle closed. Then give the engine three to four strokes with the primer as the engine is turned over. So what does that mean? So that means we have to actually start the engine as we prime it. So that's going to be kind of, uh, it's going to require a lot of kind of fancy finger work here. So we're going to go ahead and do it the lazy way. I'm going to pull the starter and push the starter. Nope, 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 nope. And we're just going to go ahead and prime it as we crank started here. There we go. Okay, so now we have a nice and primed engine. That's not quite how you do it. You need two hands with it, but unfortunately, we only have one hand. Now we're ready to get this thing actually started. So we're going to come to the magneto switch, set it to the both position, which again, cool. It doesn't start from the magneto. It has a separate switch for the starter. Now we're going to crack the throttle one-eighth of an inch, which is what it is right now. And this little handle is our starter. Crunk. You just crank on it. And off it go. Look at that. Nice and smooth start. Nice and smooth start. Go ahead and back that throttle. Man, that thing is a rumbly, brumbly engine. 
All right. So now what it says is we're not supposed to operate more than 800 RPM for the first 60 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and back the throttle. Man, that is so different than it is today because we'd run into leading problems here. So I'll call them down here. While that's warming up, I'll go ahead and start getting some of my avionics on here. So we go ahead and pull the bacon light on. I'm surprised it's not by default. Pull on the radio lights. Oh, I love that. Go ahead and let our transponder get turned on here. Make sure everything like that is all configured. Here's just all worn hunting, by the way. I think it's different different. If we want the GPS, we can push that at any time, which in this case, I'll go ahead and switch to 3D vision mode if you want like a nice little view here. Or you can go to the map mode again. This is a kind of a nice little uh, feature that they did add in here to add a little bit more functionality to it. We'll use it in the beginning, then we'll kind of switch over to visual as we're going here. Looking around here, uh, that's basically all we need to do. We let this thing kind of warm up. Obviously, we want to check all of our things to make sure they're in the green. We're in the green. We're in the green. That happened a lot faster than it would in the real plane. And you can see your engine is slowly warming up. So after um, you run at 800 RPM, then you're supposed to gradually increase the throttle up to 1000 rpm and push it just a teeny tiny bit and now you're going to basically enter into the warm-up phase of this aircraft and again since this thing is so ancient a lot of times what you can do is after you've gotten an initial few rpm in it you can just actually start your taxi and uh, kind of rip over the runway so uh, one of the problems we're going to have with this plane during taxi as you probably recognize is we are a conventional landing gear aircraft fortunately the people who designed this uh, little model here made it so that it automatically breaks for you on the pedal that you're pushing down so i'm ramming the left pedal forward and we're basically pivoting in place so whenever you're working with tail wheels i can't say this enough you've got to keep your controls towards where the wind is otherwise you're going to run the risk of going to lift up a wing and you'll see during my takeoff just how sketchy it can go the other thing too is be really ginger on the throttle you do not need to go fast one gust of wind will spin you around in a second with a tail wheel airplane especially this one and you know, i've got a little bit of play with this one and i've got other ones and like i said don't expect me to have the prettiest landing on this thing even the prettiest takeoff so we're going to go sneak around the corner here nice and gentle and try to keep my rpm up a little bit and we're just going to make our way over to the runway now it's just amazing to think that this is the pre cessna 172 this is what you'd be flying if it were you know the 1950s and it's like oh let's uh, take out my nice small little airplane and kind of show off my friends there all right we're facing into the wind so i'm gonna go ahead and push my controls into the wind just like that I'll go ahead and gently hold on the brake again easy on the brakes there's what's going to happen if you hold the brakes too hard go ahead and pop that little brake there and now we can go ahead and run up the engine again like it says in the little instructions here we can basically uh, the engine's providing full power the airplane is good to take off but what they do is uh, before takeoff you're supposed to set the altimeter we set the trim tab to the takeoff position which is right there that's good to go altimeter check oil pressure we should have plenty of it oil pressure is perfectly in the green oil temperature is perfectly in the green so we don't have to worry about it too too much here usually run everything uh, there's a little run thing we do our little generator charge check and everything like that like i said this is a little different ideally what you could do in this airplane is you see how i'm generating electricity if i were to pull the throttle out you'd expect this to something a bang and uh, the needle would fly down there because the rpm would actually drop below the generator's capability so it's a little detail that they did model but i'm not worried about it too much because i think it works great so let's go ahead and rev this sucker up and i uh, do a quick little mag check to make sure everything on this thing works okay i'm not expecting too too much but like i said we'll see what happens 1600 rpm nice and smooth like how the book basically says if the thing is uh, revved up enough uh, you know how, if it works then you can take off with it regardless of what it says over my temperature here so let's go ahead and check those mags and that's a really significant rpm drop that would be enough to take it back to maintenance i don't know if that's a flight sim thing or that's just me. actually another wasn't so bad i take it back drop that one we get about let's call it 75 which not too too bad normally what we do is we test the carburetor heat but um we're not going to have any carburetor heat because this is anti-ice this isn't really carburetor heat pull it out we're going to let it smoothly decrease push the carburetor heat back on we're going to let it smoothly increase and this aircraft is ready for takeoff like i said the engine temperature doesn't matter so much as long as everything is all warmed up as far as your oil goes so we're going to go ahead and taxi take a right we're not going to use any flaps we have plenty of room to take off and like I said, pretty easy aircraft as far as getting airborne, but just got to be careful. One thing you don't want to do, by the way, is you don't want to uh, leave your windows open. Otherwise, the aircraft will overstress as soon as you get up to about 50 knots. I don't know why they did it that way, but eh, it was a design choice. Can't control it. Let's get going. Now we're going to taxi very, very, very easily. Easy, easy, easy. I said easy. Pull the controller back towards us whenever we're taxiing. We're going to hold the brakes just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and kick the nose over. I love how easy this thing steers on the ground. It's not like anything else you've flown. And we have plenty of runway to get airborne here at Jalalabad.
Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Whoa, easy on the brakes. <laughs> you can see me doing that all the time. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make sure everything's turned off. We're going to release the brake full throttle. Notice we don't go full throttle when we're on the brakes. Uh, once we get uh, to about, mm, let's call it 60, 70 miles an hour, we're going to gently pull back and this should take us airborne. One of the strategies you can use, which is dangerous, is you can actually push the nose down and get up on the tail first. I find that for whatever reason, the tail wheel is way more sensitive than uh, most tail draggers are in the real world. That could just be a design thing too, but I'm not worried about too much. So we're going to go ahead and smoothly apply full power here. I love that little handle. That's so wild. It's so old school. And what's going to happen is as we start to pick up speed, you're going to start feeling a little bit of twitch. I'm just going to compensate for that by a little bit of right aileron and a little bit of right foot. And we're just going to gently pull back. And up we go. Now, one of the things I wish uh, Karen Ado did not do is have the default view looking like this. This is cute, but I'm not an instrument pilot. I want to look out the window here. So we're actually, my head's like this right now, even though it's like this. So kind of keep that in the back of your head. You can take off with flaps if you need to in this aircraft. I wouldn't stress about it too, too much. All right, once we get airborne, uh, we can climb at all sorts of different speeds. And remember, this is in miles per hour. So our best cruise speed is going to be between 85 and 95 miles an hour. Obviously, right now, we got to get ourselves a little tiny bit of altitude. I'm going to actually lean the mixture just a teeny tiny bit in order to get a little more power we're up here pretty darn high like i said this is jalalabad so we're way 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 off the grid here go ahead and take my nice gentle left turn and we'll start heading towards our initial destination i'm gonna let the nose come down a little bit remember because of the camera it's going to be a little exaggerated as far as the head position and that's going to get us about 90 miles per hour that's going to be plenty again we're not kilometers per hour we're not kips we're miles per hour in this aircraft which is so 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 different all right swing this way and i'll kind of push a little bit right foot and we are on our way. So again, like I said, about 90 miles per hour is going to get you a pretty good climb speed. Remember, because your view is tilted down, it's going to always seem that you're not tilted up enough. But again, if I were to stick my head like this, this is more where the aircraft is lined up. So if we did something like that, you'd actually have a better idea of where we're pointing and how we're pointing. But like I said, that was a design choice, not mine. Not something I do. It's something I normally change, but I couldn't find the right file for it, which is kind of a bummer. So we're going to use full throttle for climb. Uh, the book basically says uh, when you're climbing, you're not supposed to be really be kind of hanging out too, too long here. Uh, it's one of those things that, like, like, um, obviously, we can slowly overheat the engine. If you actually look right there, uh, we've only been uh, climbing for a moment here. We're already at 150 degrees, which is uh, quite a bit for us. Remember, we don't have cow flaps or anything like that. So it's uh, pretty impressive how fast this thing heats up. Obviously, if it's a nice hot summer day, don't climb so steep. And make sure you keep your mixture nice and rich so you don't overheat anything during our climb. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll kind of zip up to our cruise altitude. And uh, then we'll take a look at the next phase. All right, we're at our cruise altitude here. So the book says 2,450 is the maximum RPM that we can cruise with this one remember your face is tilted down so level is not level use your instruments so we're gonna go right there with the rpm and like i said we're gonna pop back up to 4500 feet it's a little disorienting but like i said you kind of get the hang of it pretty quick there we go 2450 rpm is the absolute maximum that could see about 109 108 knots it's not what i would consider to be the absolute fastest cruise now one thing you do with is when now that we're at this we're gonna go ahead and lean our mixture just a teeny tiny bit i'm just gonna use the automatic to make my life a little bit quicker here and then it's just a matter of kind of trimming the aircraft off uh, you're gonna find this thing difficult to keep nice and trim it's just kind of the nature of the beast because of how old this thing is as well as you know its center of gravity is just slightly further back than you're probably used to it probably could be safe if you bring this thing to a all, you'd probably find yourself in a real nasty spot too. So what we're going to do is we're going to just make our way over to a little destination. It's basically right at the end of this lake. Can't miss it. It's basically right off our nose right there. And uh, we're going to kind of just kind of cruise and enjoy the sight. Now, one thing I do appreciate about this aircraft is it is so shiny. <laughs> like you can literally see it's got that old school like round elevator instead of like the nice modern square ones. That is just so cool. Again, I'm just gushing, but that's all right. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and bring us to kind of our little tap of climb here and then we'll make our way back now. Alrighty, that's about a good spot for our top of climb. We'll start making our descent. Now, one of the things you're going to have trouble with these old planes is that overcooling. So what we're going to do is we're only going to back our RPM a teeny tiny bit. So what I'll actually do is keep the RPM completely in the green arc, which is about, that uh, looks like 2100. And I'll basically just nose the airplane over and use that as my way to descend. Because this thing has so much drag, and when we nose over like this, uh, we're not likely to get this thing going too fast. But you can see I'm doing 120 miles an hour already. So uh, we're certainly moving. So keep a close eye on that during your descent. Again, the goal here is uh, not to overcool your engine, so keep, make sure that RPM keeps going. Obviously, it depends on how well do they model details like this. I'm just going to pretend as if it was kind of like that. But zoom in a little bit, see if we can spot our destination here. Be able to see it. Hmm, <laughs> definitely. Bring our 
head back in. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. And we're working our way down here. Now, the neat thing about this part is we're basically in a massive mega valley here. So if you actually look on all sides, it is tremendous. You've got the Himalayas down that way. You know, we've got all sorts of crazy, crazy tall mountains. And anywhere you could put a farm, people put a farm here. And I just think that's so cool. I'm going to zoom in a little tiny bit using our handy dandy GPS here. We can actually click and drag, which I think is really wild. So you can see this thing is right on the other side of the river there. And of course, for those of you who want to be a little more traditional, go ahead and push that button. Of course, if you are being a little more traditional, what's your navigational tool? Do you have a directional gyro? No, you have a compass. And you also have this little guide down here, which is kind of handy. All right, take a look down. We're going to go make sure our switches are all set correctly. I'll flip on our nav lights. Why not? We'll go ahead and uh, enrich our mixture a little tiny bit here. We have our cabin heat and everything like that. Like I said, I'm just so tickled by the fact this is like this. By the way, this is your stall warning which um, if you haven't actually seen it, it's actually pretty cool. It's that little teeny tiny thing right there. It's that little vein that just sort of rocks when you hit just the right angle of attack. I just think that's so cool. Very old school to say the least. I'm just gonna make our way down. You can see our temperature stayed in the green the whole time, which is plenty. I'm take a peek. Like I said, we're coming right up. We're gonna cross the river. And it's gonna be right on our left kind of a thing. Now landing this aircraft is, uh, hmm, what's the best way to describe it? Involved. <laughs> so the runway we're gonna be landing on, I'm actually gonna come to my right just a little bit here, I'm using just my feet. We're basically gonna come in and kind of swing it to the left here. You can see our big body of water. Like I said, there's not a lot of runway that we're going off of here. This thing's a teeny, teeny, tiny. See it? <laughs> it's us. All right, let's do it. Go ahead and pull the throttle back. I'm actually just going to push the nose over just a little bit. We'll put a little bit of a slip in here. Slow us down. So now there are two basic ways you can land a tail dragging aircraft. You can land it via using what they call a main wheels, which is two wheels, or you can do what they call a three-point landing. Generally, for an airplane like this, I find that the three-pointer is a little bit easier to do, but you tend to have a little less control. The main wheels, I've tried it a bunch of times, and I have a heck of a time of judging how high off the ground I am with this thing. Uh, when you do it in VR, it's a lot easier, but like I said, you're always going to be... Don't be surprised if you bounce the thing about 30 times the first few times that you do land it. You're just going to fly yourself and a little bit of a slip here, getting a little old-fashioned, which is perfectly fine. I love this stuff. And you can see there's our handy-dandy runway. We're going to go ahead and I'll lead some of the speed, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back. According to the book, we uh, don't want a long letdown, so we'll go ahead and uh, pull the flaps. I love the flap handle. Click, click. Old school. Gotta love it. All right, there is our runway. Approach speed on this aircraft is supposed to be around 70 to 75 miles per hour. We're doing about 73, but we're all really, really high. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to go ahead and uh, do a three-pointer first because we've got a relatively short runway. The big thing with three-pointers is don't touch the brakes. If you slam on the brakes, you will go ahead and flip the plane. Go ahead and pull that last notch of flaps in. So look at how far up that handle is. Holy smokes. 40 degrees of flaps is going to make this thing just want to sink. All right, a little bit of crosswind, and welcome to the world of tailwheel planes, by the way, as you're going to find out in about two seconds. Getting a little bit slow, but that's okay. And keep in mind, this is level, the way my nose is now. If we wanted to do a go-ahead and um, put the thing down using an all-wheel landing, we'd be at this attitude, but we want to go a little bit slow and make sure we land all three wheels at once. Just a little bit more speed here. Over the end of the threshold, again, it's a pretty aggressive one. Welcome to tailwheel landing. All right, we're going to hold over the runway. And there's the attitude we want to be at. And we're on the ground. Go ahead and gently hold down on the brakes. Easy on the brakes. Pull the controller all the way towards you. Don't forget to push your ailerons into the wind. Easy. Easy. And we're down. That's it. <laughs> Not bad. That was actually one of the uh, smoother landings I think I've had in this plane. So now we'll go ahead and uh, pop up those flaps and make our way over here to the taxiway. Gotta love how you cannot see where you're going here. Again, easy on the brakes. Pull back. Pull back. Now, according to the book, uh, we're supposed to uh, look at this thing up. Ample time to go ahead and cool off before we get too complicated here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, snap us around in place. You want to be careful, otherwise you're going to ground loop this thing. But um, this is a pretty short taxi, so I'm not going to worry about it. Otherwise, we'd have to sit here for two or three minutes with the engine at 1,000 RPM for everything to kind of cool itself back off. Like I said, we don't have to worry about it too much because this is a flight simulator, and obviously we can always just get another engine if something goes bad. So we'll go ahead and pop into the grass over here. That's looking pretty good, and that should go ahead and take it. So hopefully this video is helpful. Uh, this is a really neat plane. Uh, the tailwheelness of it makes it very challenging to fly, but um, I sort of appreciate that. And uh, again, it's a nice little mix-up from all the usual stuff. And if you want to get really old school, you can even get rid of the GPS. Enjoy.